What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Isaiah. All right, so I just wanted to show you guys in this video how to uh, formulate the, the cost of repairs. This is how you find out the cost of repairs. And I'm also going to tell you how to make up an offer price and why the formula is what it is for an offers for an offer price. I know a lot of people have questions about this, so I'm going to give you the straight up answer in this video. So let me share my screen here. All right. So your offer price is going to be this straight up. Now I know it says 2022, but this could be used for 2023. Really, you could add about five grand to, I'd say for this heavy, no, this is all straight. This is all, this is all on point. Yeah, if you're in like California or Arizona, it might be a little bit different because the cost of materials might be different. But on average, this is what you use. This is what I use. You know, if it's like 15 square, 1,500 square feet to 2,500 square feet and it needs a full gut, if it needs a full gut and it's down to the studs, it might be like 120. You know what I mean? Um, if it's like 25 and it needs a full gut and it's down to the studs, it might be like 150, depending on the level of work you're going to do. Right. If you're going to make it top tier HGTV and you're like, you know, subcontracting it out, like you're getting other people to work for you, it's probably going to be like 150. But if it's just like empty and it's not down to like just the wooden studs, yeah, 100,000 is good. Um, if it's 1,500 square feet and it's down to the studs, it'll probably cost about 100 grand. Um, but yeah, if you just want to be like extra conservative, I would just add five grand to any one of these straight up, um, straight up, bro. I mean, we're only dealing, usually you're only dealing with houses in this area, especially in this market where everything is crashing. Everything's, you know, going downhill kind of people are really scared to buy cashes, buy houses for cash. So, I mean, you're probably not even going to be dealing with houses like in this area. You're probably just going to be dealing with houses right here and right here. I know a lot of buyers who just buy houses 1,500 square feet and under because it's so cheap to repair something if something breaks. You know what I mean? So use this, screenshot this. I got this from Jerry Norton's video. I feel like Jerry Norton is the goat when it comes to teaching about wholesaling on YouTube. He is the most in-depth person when it comes to like teaching about wholesaling, about like every, every single aspect of wholesaling, he goes into detail about it. But yeah, this is from like a video from a year ago. Screenshot this, use this. I still use this. This is something very reliable to go off of if you're trying to figure out the cost of repairs when it comes to rehabbing a house. All right. Now, the offer price. The offer price, the formula to get your offer price is ARV times 70% minus rehab cost minus the wholesale fee. That's going to give you your offer price. Okay. So if a house is, I'm just going to give a quick example. If a house, if a house's ARV is 200 grand. Two hundred k, and it needs. Let's say it's you know somewhere in this area, and it needs an average rehab. So let's say fifty grand. Rehab cost equal fifty k, and we want to make ten k. So 
So I know back in 2022 and maybe 2021, you really probably didn't even have to go by this rule because people were just buying all over the place. Anything made sense. But now in 2023, since everything's crashing, you have to stick to this rule, bro. Like nine times out of 10, buyers aren't going to buy it if it's not to this rule or even better. So straight up. All right. So let's see. So ARV is 200,000 times 70%. All right. Now, here's the big question. Why do we do seven times 70%? All right, that is a good question to have. Some people do times 60% to be extra conservative, right? Some people do 0.75% to be lenient. What does that mean? Well, the ARV times 70% means the ARV minus 30%. You understand? 100 times 70% equals 70, which is the same thing as 100 minus 30. If you have to rewind this video and watch it again, do so, you know, but I know that there's some beginners out there who just don't understand this and that's cool. I didn't understand it either. And I didn't, I didn't really have somebody to explain it to me. I had to figure it out, but eventually I did have a few people explain it to me. So if the ARVs, whatever, a hundred percent and you times it by 70%, that means you're deducting 30%. Why are you deducting 30%? You're deducting 30% for closing costs, realtor fees when you resell the house, unseen expenses, um, taxes and insurance when you're carrying the property if a buyer like takes out a loan, um, interest for if they're getting a loan, like interest of maybe it's a hard money lender, something like that. So you just take off 30% for those reasons. And if people ask you, if your seller asks you, the frick, why are you taking off 30%? You tell them, well, you got to, um, what did I just say? Well, you got to pay closing costs. You got to pay, I have to have pay a realtor's fee whenever you, uh, whenever I'm going to resell the house, you know, there's unseen expenses, you know, sometimes things pop up, you know, sometimes the rehab costs go over what I estimated they would be. You know, I have taxes and insurance I got to pay for carrying the property for like, I have to pay taxes and insurance for the amount of time that I have the house in my possession. Um, you're going to say all that and you're going to like, well, that's your problem. And I was like, yeah, it is my problem. That's why I'm putting it in my numbers. You know, some sellers will say, oh, well, that's your choice. If you want to use a realtor fee, you're right. It is my choice. That's why I'm putting it in my numbers. These are my numbers. This is my formula that I use. You know, some sellers are just so out of their mind, bro. It's like, and a house will be fully gutted. Literally, I have this situation right now. A house will be fully gutted, bro. And they'll say, oh, it only takes two, two grand to fix it up. Two grand. Two grand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Some sellers are just out of their mind. They're lying, they're BSing, they're full of crap. And sometimes you could walk it, walk them through it. And even when you walk them through it, they're still going to be like, oh, no, that's bull crap. And you just got to follow up with them. Just, okay, let me know how that works out for you, buddy. And they'll just be stuck with the property forever. But it's, you got to move on. It's like your job to like move on. It's very stressful dealing with those types of people because you know you're right, but you just got to move on because they're idiots. So, boom. That's why you minus 30%. That's why ARV times 70% is because of all those expenses I just said. Realtor fees, taxes and insurance, unseen expenses. Um, did I say taxes and insurance already? So yeah, that. So ARV times 70%. So the ARV was 200K times 70%. So you times 0.7 equals 140. Our rehab costs are 50 minus 50 grand equals boom. We're at 90K. All right.
Now we need to do our wholesale fee, minus 10K. So if a house has an ARV of 200 grand and the rehab costs are about 50 grand and we want to make 10 grand, then we need to make an offer price of 80 grand. Now, there's more to this because you have to be sure that the ARV is 200K. Sometimes you got to be a little conservative, you know, with the ARV. If the ARV is 210, maybe bring it down to 200 or at least use 200 in your formula. But when you're presenting it to a buyer, be like, yeah, the ARV is 210. You know what I mean? But in your numbers, when you're running your numbers, you always want to be a bit conservative, you know, because things don't go as planned all the time. And you want to make sure that this is a good deal for your buyers. So yeah, if a house is worth 200 grand fixed up and it costs 50, 50 grand to, to, uh, fix it up and you want a 10 grand whole field selfie, you need to offer 80 grand. They might be saying they want 150 grand, right? So a house has an ARV of 200 and they're asking 150. You just got to have tough skin, bro. As much as I was complaining today about being stressed out about these crazy sellers, you do have to have tough skin and you just have to be willing to make that offer. You have to have that conversation. And the best way to ha make these offers with these sellers is walk them through it. Help them understand why are you offering 80 grand when they're asking 150? You just have to walk them through it. You know, sometimes you ask them, what do you think the house is worth? Okay, well, in your opinion, what would you say the house is worth, you know, fully fixed up, you know, everything is good. What would you say the house is worth? And sometimes they'll say, let's say the ARV is two, 200. They'll say 250, 280. Be like, okay, really? Okay. What? Where did you get those numbers? Or like, what led you to get those numbers? Really? Show me, like, show me, please. Yeah. Do you have comps? You know, be like, what comps did you use to get that, those numbers? And so let's say all is going right. They show you a few comps. Maybe they'll help you understand like, okay, there's some comps that I didn't see or, or they don't have comps. And then that's when you could show them your comps and you could be like, yeah, see, this is, so that's kind of where I was thinking, you know, and da, 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 da. But let's say, so let's keep using the illustration of a delusional seller. A delusional seller will be like, well, my neighbor's house sold for 300 grand five years ago. <laughs> five years ago, bro. It'll be like my neighbor's house sold for 300 grand five years ago. And in those situations, still, you just got to walk them through it. Be like, okay, yeah. Oh, okay. I did see it. Oh, but their house was totally fixed up, huh? And their house was, had three stories, didn't it? Yeah. And you, their house was 3,500 square feet, wasn't it? Yours is only two grand, 2,000 square feet. Mm. Yeah. So I don't, yeah, that, that was, that is a good house and it did sell for that much. Also it's 2023. It's not five years ago, you know, houses, house prices were different back then. You know, let's say that you agree on the, the ARV, but let's say he, his delusional seller here, the seller thinks that it costs 10 grand to fix the house up, but it costs obviously 50 grand. Ask him, okay, have you ever flipped a house before? Or just, or don't even be like, be like, oh, okay. So you've, so you've done this before, huh? You flipped multiple, multiple houses before, huh? Or... Or just be like, really? 10 grand? What would you spend 10 grand on? They'll say two things that add, bro, flooring, painting is 10 grand. Painting the house. <laughs> painting the house is 10 grand, bro. You know what I mean? So sometimes the best thing, the best way to have these conversations with the sellers is to walk them through it help them to understand where you're coming from. You can't just be like, my numbers are, my numbers say I need to be at 80 grand. That's my numbers. Deal with it. 
you can't do that because they're going to be like, no, I'm not going to deal with it. Screw you, you know, but you just got to walk them through it. And you're not always going to get them on the first phone call. That's why you got to follow up and, you know, build rapport, you know, but if they're just like stuck in it, here's the thing. You have to discern of whether or not you're wasting your time. Some sellers are delusional. They're a-holes and they're stubborn. If they check those three boxes, bro, leave them, leave them, make, give them a six month follow-up, six month follow-up. Don't even waste your time with those. They're delusional, a-hole and they're stubborn. Yeah. Don't even, don't even, but if they're, you know, open-minded and, or that maybe they're just saying that they need this price because they're in a situation and this is the price that they need. They don't know if the house is worth that much. They just need this much money to go do whatever they got to do. That's when you dig deeper, dig towards the pain points, see what their issue is and see how can you solve it? How can you help them in their situation? That's when you offer creative finance. That's when you offer terms, other creative solutions, but that's a video for another day. I hope this video helped guys. This is how you find the rehab cost. This is how you, formulate an offer price and how you would give the offer price. All right. If you guys want free wholesaling contracts, be sure to comment in the comment section, just say done, or I emailed you. All right. And then email me. All right. So make sure you email me. And then after you email me, make sure you comment in the comment section of this video and say done, or I emailed you. Because if you don't do that, Guys, I will I not I, I will probably not see your email. So email me. Comment done so I don't miss your email. I know who to look out for and I'll give you my wholesaling contract. It's a really nice contract. It's professional, easy to understand, and it's great and it pro it protects you, bro. So that's it, man. Like, comment, subscribe. If you want to see more videos like this, yeah, make sure to uh subscribe. I drop the videos weekly about wholesaling, self-improvement, and life in general. All right. Stay motivated, y'all.